Hello everyone, I'm Anantata Agarwal and I'm excited to present our work, which was a collaboration between the University of Lausanne and the University of Michigan. OECD countries have experienced growth in high-skilled versus low-skilled jobs with job seekers earning less than a tertiary education and young people experiencing the most difficulties, especially those transitioning to high-skilled jobs. It was predicted that there would be additional risks of unemployment and underemployment for both men and women, despite the fact that unemployment risks for women in most countries is higher. A failure to address these disparities would lead to deeper social divisions and thus negative well-being, social cohesion and overall growth. Historically, skills have been central to the discourse around capitalist production and the labor market. In today's workplace, skills are no longer limited to technical knowledge. Instead, skills have become almost anything that can be tested or ranked in terms of their capacity to achieve desirable outcomes and profits for employers. Job seekers without a college degree and ethnic minorities face more difficulties securing jobs in the current job market changes. Past HCI work calls out the urgency to support these job seekers and those traditionally excluded from the labor market. These underrepresented job seekers, who we refer to as those without university degrees, low-income job seekers, and immigrant populations were hit hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, past research suggests that crises exacerbate income inequality. Thus, interventions to support these job seekers are needed at this time. Our study took place in Switzerland to understand how a novel technology intervention focused on skills can support job seekers. In the past few years, the Swiss job market has undergone important changes leading to growing unemployment rates. The watchmaking industry, which was the third largest export, was affected by the advent of smart watches. As a result, the industry suffered from export reduction and removed a significant portion of the workforce. Thus, many job seekers needed to transfer their skills to new industries and what reskilling may be required. Skills Identifier was designed as a tool to highlight how a job seeker's current skills sets overlap with those needed for their targeted jobs. The design of Skills Identifier relied on one of the most popular employment databases for job analysis, the U.S. Department of Labor's owner database. The owner database outlined a number of standardized competencies or skills necessary for each job position. This data set contained about 1,000 occupations and numerical scores that matched these two skills. Imagine Anna, an immigrant currently working part-time and who's looking for a full-time position. She lands on Skills Identifier's homepage. The tool allows Anna to enter up to four previous jobs. She enters security guard and janitor as past position and nursing assistant as a target job. Then she clicks on continue. By way of using this tool, she learns that active listening, a skill listed across her past jobs, was associated with her target job as well. Although she realized that her past jobs fostered active listening, she did not realize that this skill was also important for nursing. Our work first aimed to answer the following question. How do underrepresented job seekers integrate skills identifier into their long-term job seeking practices? The past job skills identifier study in the US was a one-time evaluation in a controlled environment. To extend our understanding of skills identifier, we conducted a field deployment to understand how job seekers use it in longitudinally. We designed a three-week deployment to understand job seekers' use of skills identifier. After participants enrolled in the study, we conducted a virtual pre-treatment session which included a semi-structured interview and tutorial of skills identifier. We asked participants about their employment status, job search strategies, and recent job search experience in the session. We collaborated with the Regional Employment Center and recruited 16 job seekers who were predominantly women. Only three job seekers had bachelor's degree and 11 of them were immigrants. In the next few slides, we will briefly go through Skills Identifier's benefits and spend more time describing its limitations. 
We found that skills identify benefited job seekers in three ways. First, the tool supported job seekers in developing skill awareness, fostering self-reflection, and encouraging career exploration. These findings echo the past work that studied skills identify in the U.S. Second, skills identify assisted skill appropriation and adaptation for job seekers to rephrase their skills for different occupation. Lastly, Skills Identify was helpful for immigrant job seekers to identify technical vocabularies to precisely express competencies in their resumes. We identified two limitations of Skills Identifier not identified in the prior work. First, participants mentioned that the most basic skills listed by the tool were too generic and these would require additional explanation. For instance, P1 was currently working as an administrative assistant but looking for a new position as a HR assistant. He described how the basic skills would need to be further explained in the situation of her previous jobs. We also found that the tool provided limited guidance on explaining soft skills. The majority of the listed skills were soft skills that were related to interpersonal communication or high levels problem solving, such as active listening and public speaking. Several participants felt these skills were more relevant in a resume than technical skills. Participants wanted to have a more diversified palette of skills provided by the tool. Based on our findings, we offer four design implications to better improve skills identifier in supporting job seekers. I'll discuss two of the four design implications in this presentation. Please refer to the paper for the third and fourth implications. First, tools that highlight job seeker skills should take different occupations context into account and provide context specific details. In this revised mockup of skills identifier, when a user is looking for occupations, the tool would show a pop-up window with additional information on occupations to help them understand the job. Our participants wish the tool could provide additional information that could help describe fit with the target occupation. Thus, the tool should provide a wider range of competencies. In the revised mockup, we added a dashboard that presents a report of competencies based on a job seeker's prior and targeted jobs. The competencies are organized in the four categories provided by ONET, that is, the U.S. Department of Labor dataset. Each category is color-coded. The job seeker can then visualize the competency by visiting the journey page. On the journey page, past and target occupations are displayed in a timeline and the key competencies for each occupation are listed. Job seekers can explore more details of their competencies by hovering on a competency. In addition to design implications, our findings reveal several broader challenges faced by underrepresented job seekers within the current labor market structure. Please read our paper for detail about these challenges, implications for the post-COVID labor market. Lastly, we want to call attention to the ethical consideration with the rise of data-driven hiring technologies. Such technologies perpetuate inequalities based on gender, race and ethnicity, nationality, disability, and more. For future research should study the seemingly invisible discrimination against underrepresented job seekers. Our work was funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation, Swiss National Center of Competence in Research Lives, and the U.S. National Science Foundation. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.